Potential 2020 contender Democratic Senator Kirsten Gillibrand tweeting her vision for America. Our future is, says Gillibrand, female, intersectional, powered by our belief in one another, and we're just getting started. Which led us to wonder what exactly is intersectionality. Well, Merriam-Webster defines it this way, the complex, cumulative way in which the effects of multiple forms of discrimination, such as racism, sexism, and classism, combine, overlap, or intersect, especially in the experience of marginalized individuals or groups. So is focusing on that a winning strategy for the left? Let's talk about it with tonight's power panel, Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall, senior politics writer, U.S. News and World Report, David Catanese, and radio host on WMAL here in Washington, D.C., Larry O'Connor. Hey, hey. Welcome to all of you. Good to see you, Shannon. Good to be with you, Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Okay, so one of the first things we saw was a response from Senator Marco Rubio, obviously a Republican, responding to his Democrat counterpart saying this, our future is... American, an identity based not on gender, race, ethnicity, or religion, but on the powerful truth that all people are created equal with a God-given right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All right, with that in mind, Larry, yeah. what do you make of Senator Gillibrand's plans for yeah, the future? What Marco Rubio said there is not a Republican idea. It's an American idea. What, are we, what, what is Kristen Gillibrand going to do? Make America intersectional again? That's really what the candidates are going to run on in 2020? You know, because the Hillary Clinton campaign was wasn't uh, 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 enough about identity politics and and gender diversity and dividing us. I, the American people are so tired of this. I went to an event this week, the Independent Women's Forum, last mm -hmm. week, uh, where they gave an award to Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley is a woman. She is a daughter of immigrants. She is a person of color. I have more in common based on my values and my principles and my beliefs and my ideas with Nikki Haley than I do with Bernie Sanders, who was a pretty white guy, right? So what, intersectionality means that Nikki Haley is in some way different from me? No. Americans are about ideas, not our colors, not our body parts, and every American in their heart knows that. This is offensive to what we really believe. Okay, so Leslie, what do you make of what Larry's saying there? Because he thinks, like, he actually, I think, wants them to run with this because he Please. doesn't think it connects with the average American, and he thinks it'll be a winner for the GOP. Yes, this what alienates them. <laughs> Well, 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 first of all, I'm so sorry you're offended by it, Larry. I, I don't want to, you know, push that. I, I don't want to be insensitive. It's about but time really, you were sorry. I mean, this is, this is, first of all, this is a comment by one Democrat that clearly plans on running for the, for the presidency in 2020, first of all. Second of all, this is not the Democratic agenda or talking point. And third of all, Larry, you're wrong. And let me tell you how. <laughs> when you look at the composite, when you look at the composite of individuals Democrats that have won election to our body of Congress, when you have Native Americans that haven't been there, when you have Muslim women, one of which wears a hijab, a head covering, that haven't been there before. I'm sorry, but we saw in this midterm election that that intersection, if you will, of faith. Uh, of 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 uh, gender, of color, of culture, definitely matters. And the future is female. With the majority of the population in this country and the world, we are treated and and even act as a minority. And we've had more women elected now to Congress, more women that have run, and more women that have voted. And I, mean, I think that's going to continue going I, forward. We might have to see if Leslie's running in 2020. I mean, yeah, that sounds like sounds a stump like speech it. right there. No. All right, David, <laughs> it's a very crowded field. And I was reading one analyst today who said, hearing this from Kirsten Gillibrand, that she is a white female. They said of privilege, and so you should expect to hear more language and more talk like this from her as she tries to reach outside the perception of her. Well, look, I think Larry made the very good case of why conservatives don't like intersectionality. But the bottom line is, for Democrats, identity politics are very important, especially if you're going to run in a field of 20 to 30 Democrats some who are women, some who are African Americans. This is important for their constituencies. When they hear Black Lives Matter, you have dreamers, you have transgender people. Th these are all loud, vocal constituencies that are very important in the Democratic Party. Maybe not so much in the Republican Party, but in a primary, this is going to be very important. Remember in 2016 when Bernie Sanders got in trouble not for coming out for reparations for slavery? He took a lot of heat in the Democratic primary. Bernie Sanders lost the Democratic primary for one reason. He did terrible with African American voters. So I think Kirsten G Gillibrand right there, as a white female, talking about intersectionality mm -hmm. is laying down a marker saying, yes, I'm speaking to you, African-American voters. I'm speaking to you, 
immigrant community. I'm speaking to you, transgender community. And we can roll our eyes as much as we want about that if you're on the conservative Republican side, but in a Democratic field, it may be pretty smart to do. Yeah. All right, well, we have some something else I want to get you all to re react to from another Democratic senator, this one, Maisie Hirono from Hawaii. She's uh, out there talking about the Democrats' inability to connect or where they have failed to connect. She says this, it's... Um, let me find it here. We have to kind of tell everyone how smart we are. And so we have a tendency to be very left brain. She said, we Democrats know so much kind of that it, she goes on to say it alienates voters, because if you're not talking <laughs> to them, um, you know, from emotion, if you're just out there spouting how smart you are, uh, it doesn't always work. So quick reaction from all of you. Leslie, I'll start with you. Um, I somewhat agree and somewhat disagree. First of all, when you look at uh, former debates, whether it be Hillary Clinton, John Kerry, who in a sense came off as academics or highbrow, that doesn't work with American voters. They want somebody they can have a beer with. However, mm -hmm. Democrats, I think, hurt themselves sometimes by appealing to and speaking just from and to the heart. And when we saw that in the last presidential election, where some numbers in the economy were largely ignored in states like Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. All right, David, what about this idea that they're too intellectual or left brain? I mean, it reminds me of Al Gore, who is seated at the, the funeral service today. It reminds me of him and why he lost to George W. Bush. Most people thought he was too wonky. Most people thought maybe he was a smarter guy in the room, but wasn't as relatable. And I do think that matters, especially in races for the presidency. We saw it in 2016 again. Hillary Clinton had a lot more policy knowledge in her head, but she couldn't connect emotionally and viscerally with the voters. And Donald Trump could. And that is more important in our emotional media driven politics. Well, and Larry, Leslie yeah. has pointed out that Bill Clinton was a Rhodes Scholar. Yeah. But he yeah. was a guy who didn't talk to people that way. I mean, he was, as she said, kind of the guy you go have a beer with. Yeah, I kind of reject the premise that these Democrats lost because they were so smart. I'm sorry. Uh, they weren't smart. They just <laughs> acted like they were more smart than everybody else. And that is the problem. Excuse me, smarter than everybody else. That smart. was the problem. Uh, the fact of the matter is, socialist left-wing ideology that is dominant in the Democratic Party right now in America. Every time it's been tried around the world, it has failed. The American people know that. This isn't about being smart. This is about being practical and understanding what works. And Republicans have policies that work. Hmm. All right. Maybe Larry's running, too. I don't know. Larry, <laughs> David, and running. Leslie. The future is female, Shannon. I want you to run. <laughs> I don't think the world's, uh, the country's ready for that. Uh, thank you all very much. Good to see you. Thanks, Shannon. Good night. All right, up next.